All right, what is happening guys? Welcome to a pretty cool little tutorial here. Um, today we're gonna talk about offset paths for printing and cutting. And if you ever wanna make a sticker cut line, uh, I'm gonna show you the difference between a complex and a simple vector cut line, a raster cut line. So this is part one of uh, a few parts coming up. So here we go, let's check it out. So I'm currently in Adobe Illustrator version 2019. Um, if you're using a newer, older version, uh, I think this applies to quite a few years in the making, so we should be good. All right. Uh, if you can see, I have my properties panel up here, and first thing we're we'll do is talk about our document setup. Now, document setup. If you're not sure where that is found, uh, you can also let me just show you in another spot. You can locate document setup right here and there you go edit artboards is actually going to show you the width of your document right now we've set up a document for 22 inches we're going to apply this to a 24 inch vinyl decal material all right actually a white printed vinyl okay here we go 22 inches wide and the height can change we'll talk about that later when we print or cut these print and cut Okay, so people look at a sticker and they think, well, you know, you printed a sticker, it's got the cut lines. There's actually a, quite a bit involved in this. So first thing you need to know, understand the difference between vector and raster. So the image on the graphic on the left is vector and the graphic on the right. Oop, got something funky happening down there. Just get rid of that. Image on the right is raster okay so it's important to know the difference so as we zoom in closer you're using an image from the internet here's the difference okay the line that you're going to use to create a cut line may look different depending on the origin of your file so if this is an image rather than a vector uh, we'll have to apply a different technique so technique one is using an existing vector graphic. All right, so what you're gonna do is go into object group, and then you're going to duplicate the vector shape, make a, make a copy, copy paste, option drag, whatever, whatever your best favorite method is. Okay, next step, make sure you have that entire graphic selected. And you're gonna go to Pathfinder, okay? If you don't see Pathfinder, Go Window, Pathfinder, and we're going to Unite. Hopefully this works. It doesn't always work. You can always click it a couple times, and that unites that as one shape. Okay, let's change that to a green. All right, so here we have, I'm just going to close that up, an exact duplicate, as you guys can see, of that shape. Okay. So next step, this is really important. This is what kind of separates a beginner from maybe someone who's advanced. So if you're moving into this stage, um, it's pretty cool. Here we go. So object, sorry, make sure, your, make sure your shape graphic is selected. Object, path, offset path, okay? You can also find this in your properties panel under offset path. I'm so glad they put that there. Okay. By default, whatever you have may not look like this. You might have quite a bigger blobby outline. You might have something inset or negative. So you can also do negative. But by default, ours was set up properly. So I'm actually going to go back in 0 0.092 inches. What does that mean? Well, if you're more comfortable in millimeters or points, go ahead and measure that. I'm going to type in 7PT, and I'm also going to do round. Round gives it that nice, smooth edging, and I find that some of the output stickers, labels that we make, round is a nice option for complex graphics. You need to use miter um, for sharper edges, tighter edges, you can use that too. Uh, but round is, is nice, okay? You can experiment with that. I'm going to preview. That looks really good. Okay, so let's okay that. 
next step we're going to just separate because what this does I don't know if you saw that so it actually keeps the original shape intact so when you create an offset path it keeps the original shape and if you need to move this to the back you can or to the front range range point okay there we go all right so let's compare. So the original is the original shape, offset is a little bit larger, and it's it's not just scaled up, it's a, an actual duplicate uh, outline um, with proper proportional widths, stroke widths, or expanded widths. So we're going to delete the original, and we're going to convert this to a no fill with the outline. Okay, X out of that. And right now, I'm not going to get into any alignment tools or anything like that. I'm just going to use my nudge tool on my keyboard to center that up. You could use your align tools, but I'm pretty comfortable doing this. So I want this white gap. Uh, and the reason I've created a cut line like this instead of a kiss cut, a kiss cut would be right up against the edge of the graphic. Typically, I'll create a, a white gap outside of the artwork to... Um, to make sure that whatever surface this sticker or emblem deco goes on, that you could put on a dark surface or a white surface, and it's going to stand out because it's got this white um, outline. So, all right, now the last step is really important. The printer needs to know that this line is an actual proper cut line. So you have to tell the printer this, okay? This is not automatic. This, will, this line will actually print out green if you just left it. Just print everything. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to take this, and if you've downloaded the raw roll and swatch set, or if you've got this in your library, you can activate your cut contour swatch. So I'm going to select this. So maybe you got that from your resource folder. You created it from scratch. Not going to do that today. Um, but you need to copy this element. So you can edit, copy, and we're just going to go back and paste. Now before I paste it in, I want to show you something really important. Go to swatches. Look at my swatches. Okay, Watch what happens when I paste. So it actually adds that swatch in, which is great. I can now delete that shape that contained the original swatch select the outline and colorize the outline the proper swatch and if we look at these this swatch name it has a special swatch it has a special color designated to tell the printer that whenever it sees that that that's where we need to cut okay so that's pretty cool so now last step I'm just gonna show you that I need to select the shape Okay, whether you're working with a raster or a vector, select the original shape. Don't select the outline for this. Okay, if you want to separate them, if it makes it easier, just select the original, go object, flatten transparency. Okay, don't worry too much about these settings, they should be okay. If you find any problems with your print file, 90% of the time it's because you didn't flatten your transparency. So that will cause the cut contour not to work. And I'm just going to nudge that in with my arrow keys. And that looks pretty awesome. Okay. So part two, we'll do an image trace and we'll show you how to actually do a shortcut for that. But I think that turned out pretty good. Last step you want to do is you want to save this as and we're going to save it as an EPS okay so don't just rename it you want to save it as an EPS so we'll call this Husky's logo cut contour and save it as an EPS and you can output from the PC and you should see your cut lines everything should work awesome okay stay tuned for part two up next outputting and image tracing a raster image. Have a great day.